Hello, Beth. Hi, Pastor Doug. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. It's that time of year. I hope everybody's had a great summer and uh, fall is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And we are here to talk about the story of the prodigal son today. Uh, it's found in Luke chapter um, 15, starting with verse 11. And what we're going to do in this Bible study is talk through the story and some key points in the story, and then we'll take a look at how we're going to teach that story with children. Yeah, good. Um, first of all, the story is called the prodigal son, mm -hmm. and I had to re-look up what prodigal even meant, and it means uh, reckless or wayward, and so it's the son that that word prodigal is describing that takes half of, uh, or his portion of the inheritance from his dad. Right, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit yeah. because... That's in, especially in that day and age, what he was saying to his dad is, I wish you were yeah, the dead. Yeah, the way you got an inheritance is when someone dies. And so, uh, really, there's some pretty deep symbolism or significance to uh, this son asking for his inheritance. It's uh, very disrespectful, uh, especially in the culture and day and age, uh, that this parable would have taken place. Um, yeah, it was a strong statement. Yeah, and but instead of the, the father taking it in a wrong way, he, he mm -hmm. was like, well, here you go. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, I, the way I like to look at the father's response in some way is that it's almost a teaching moment of, I'm going to let you do this, but be careful what you ask for. And of course, we see in the story exactly what happened. So let's, yeah, let's go through the story of the prodigal son. Yeah, so he gets the money. Mm -hmm. His inheritance he takes off for a faraway land and squanders mm -hmm. the money on reckless living. And then there becomes a famine in the land, mm -hmm. and um, he's out of money and needs to find work. Yeah. And the place that he finds work is with um, a farmer who offers him the job of feeding pigs. Feeding the pigs. Now, once again, the, we assume that the, uh, the, um, this prodigal son is, is uh, Jewish. And so pigs were considered unclean animals to even be around, uh, let alone to be feeding. I mean, he really, the, that, the point of the story, I think, is that the son hit rock bottom. Couldn't get much worse. It couldn't get worse. When he's scrounging after the food he, yeah, one of, of the, pigs, one of the, of the most pigs. unclean animals yeah. Yeah, in the Jewish tradition. So, so well, then he realizes, comes to his senses, is what senses. they say, what is written in the Bible. He comes to his senses, yeah. which means he realizes that, hey, even the servants that work for my dad, mm -hmm. they have it better than this. They aren't mm -hmm. going hungry. How about if I just go home and tell my dad, I've really messed up, I'm really sorry, can I please <laughs> um, become one of your hired servants? This parable is, uh, I think this is a good place to bring in that uh, uh, concept concept of repentance and forgiveness um, because this story really helps us to understand what it means to repent. The word repent um, was not just something that John the Baptist did, yelled out in the wilderness, you know, repent, prepare the way of the Lord. But the word re repent uh, literally means to turn around, to change direction. And, uh, and so that's what we literally see in this story is that the son goes out to a faraway land and get, is, is, uh, hit, 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 hits rock bottom <laughs> yeah. and then literally does a 180, turns around, and comes back. And, and that's, that's the real meaning of repentance, to, to turn your life around, to turn whatever it is you're doing around so completely that you're going in the opposite direction. Right, and I know that we've all faced times in our lives where we've had, it's, it's been worse to stay in the situation than we are than to own up to our mistakes and mm -hmm. ask for forgiveness. Oftentimes, uh, not uh, not always, but um, uh, oftentimes, especially during Lent, I, I know we've used the brief order of confession and forgiveness to start out um, sort of preparing ourselves as we come in on Sunday morning to hear the Word of God and just to sort of put away all of those things or just to set aside or, or be forgiven of those things in our lives that, um, that might be a barrier to understanding how much God loves us. And so... Um, it's a, it's a wonderful tradition that we have in the Lutheran Church to have the, the brief order of confession and forgiveness. And in fact, it, on Sunday, if you're in the pews on page 94 in the, in the red hymnal, you know, it talks about, uh, you know, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you and others, and on and on. And, um, and then not by any power of an ordained minister, but uh, really we are asking, or I as the pastor stand up and, and ask, 
you know, God by God's power we are forgiven of our sins and freed from the bondage of sin. Yeah. And so, so anyway, so that's what this son does. He, he, he repents, and then the next part of the story we see the result of that. One of my favorite parts about this story is that the dad is watching. He's yeah. watching and waiting for his son to come home. He hasn't forgotten about him. He's, you know, concerned for him. And before the son can even get home, the dad runs out yeah. to you, greet him. You have this wonderful image of a, of a dad just every morning waking up and looking on to the horizon and every evening before going to bed looking out, you know, onto the horizon where his son has traveled and, and just, you know, hoping and praying and always never giving up or losing hope. And the son was gone a long time. It said that he lived in that land long enough so that a drought came and basically all the food dried up and you know so it was a, it was an amount of time but yeah that beautiful image of, the, of that father yeah and and the son starts he had a prepared speech <laughs> to give to his father and he starts to give it and and he's interrupted by the dad who's telling servants hey go go fetch me a roll a ring yeah. sandals and let's kill the fatted calf yeah. and again uh, uh, great symbols yeah. uh, again Thank of you. that culture in that day tradition I mean the robe uh, meant he had a high place in the home the ring uh, was a uh, status of um, authority yeah authority uh, the um, sandals even uh, one of the commentators wasn't a, uh, wasn't yeah. a servant yeah but servants or... didn't have sandals that was a luxury item that yeah. only family members or important people had and, and to kill the fatted calf that is uh, you only do that for the grandest of celebrations and of course that's where we hear that wonderful line, uh, you know, my son was lost, now he is found, he was dead, and now he, he is alive. alive. Yeah. yeah. So. so they start having a celebration. They have a party. And in walks, <laughs> in walks the elder the son. The older brother is yeah. coming in from the field and wondering what's going here's on. Here's the party. Yeah. They didn't have texting. No, no. The the older son uh, <laughs> you know, uh, comes in and, and realizes uh, that. His this bonehead of a younger brother of his that took all half of dad's inheritance and, or took all of his inheritance, uh, the, young, you know, the, the younger son's half of the inheritance and, and wasted it away and now you know, the father is still putting the finest robe on him and killing the fatted calf. And so he's angry and, and has a right to be. But in the kingdom of God, you know, that's where it's a struggle for us as Christians to really walk in the footsteps of Christ, to sacrifice ourselves even for those or to forgive and to love those that sometimes are really hard to love or understand or figure out. Uh, and that's the real challenge of the Christian walk, is to, to love even the unlovable because that's what Jesus does. Mm -hmm. And that's what's shown to us in this, in this story. And, it, and it, I, I'm glad the story's here that points out how hard that is. It is. It's very hard. And, and Jesus was telling the story to a large crowd of people, sure. and he had been telling other parables too. So there were, um, in the crowd there would have been Pharisees, Pharisees and tax put, yeah, collectors yeah. and prostitutes and all manner of people yeah. hearing the story, and um, I know I can put myself in all of the three main character positions, that, that of having to forgive, not having to forgive, having mm -hmm. the opportunity to forgive people or messing up or being angry okay. about something so we can all relate to that but Jesus was trying to get that message across to yeah and so then then the challenge uh, again and again one of the commentators talked about uh, the twist uh, is really you know sometimes I mean we are not just the prodigal son it's easy to think of ourselves as oh you know I've really had times in my life when I've been wayward and I'm glad that God still loves me when I come back but it, I think it's even more challenging to put ourselves in in the um, shoes of the older brother Say, gosh, I've done everything right, and it's not fair that I get treated just the same as the ones who are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Or not even the same. Or not even the same. Didn't yeah. have a party. Sure, that's right. That's right. I, I uh, went to a preaching conference a number of years ago, and Walter Brueggemann, I, I believe it was, uh, preached on this story and talked about how the younger son made the decision to go back to the father and how hard that was. But then he also put that twist at the end. He said, you know, you can see the older son sitting sitting outside the party at the doorway and the father coming out and saying, you know, I'm not gonna I can't make you come in. But this party is here is here for you as well. And just, you know, once again, it's the decision that needs to be made. It doesn't seem fair or just, but you know, are we gonna let our understanding of what's 
fair and just and right get in the way of being at the party, of being part of that God's love and care and forgiveness, which is is the party. That's cool. So what? So how is this all going to break down on this wonderful <laughs> rotation? Okay, so we have a, a great memory verse. Mm -hmm. It's from First uh, John four eleven. Mm -hmm. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we must love each other, mm -hmm. and it's just a really nice welcoming, yes. welcoming verse. There's um, five concepts that we'll be dealing with. Um, God loves us even when we do things that are wrong, and that God wants to forgive us when we're when we're truly sorry. Making bad choices can hurt yourself and hurt others. So it's like you were saying, it's all about decisions. Yeah, I even put uh, next to that God. You know, we often don't think about how that Father, again, looking on the, up into the horizon every day, how hurt his heart must have been, you know, each each morning when he didn't see the sun coming or each evening as the sun set and he still only, you know, for all he knew his son was, was dead mm -hmm. uh, and would never return. And so, yeah, making choices hurt not only ourselves but others and, and God as well. So one of the things, that's, that's just a cool thing to think about um, and visualize that God um, looking for you each yeah. morning when you wake yeah. up or yeah. throughout your day and just taking time to say hi and check in with them. Um, God doesn't want us to be jealous mm -hmm. when things don't seem fair and to be thankful for what we have. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about forgiveness mm -hmm. quite a bit and um, that can be hard. Sure. You know, how, you know, is it just, and, and the difference between just saying I forgive you and really meaning it. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, kind of uh, walking the walk and, and yeah. showing that acceptance of others and not just, um, not just, not just not giving just it lip service. Saying it. That's right. That's yeah. right. We'll, we'll work on our Bible skills of finding memory verse, finding the story, um, talking about what a parable means. Um, it's a story that Jesus told um, using simple terms or things that people could relate to to help them better understand it. Um, and talking about confession. Um, mm -hmm. One of our workshops is even going to, to look in the, the hymnal and um, walk through confession and forgiveness and mm -hmm. what all that means and show help kids become familiar with it and yeah. Good. look for that and then find it in worship so that that connection between um, confession, forgiveness, and worship and the importance of connecting with God. Sure. Good. And we're going to do all this in some really fun ways. Mm -hmm. I brought some props oh, yeah, today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. So I have these two little figures here, uh -huh. and they're um, made of wire, and you can bend them or pose them. But one of the things that, that children will get to do is um, make their own wire people, okay. and then they're going to attach them to wood and make them in the pose of what they imagine that moment of forgiveness looked like okay. when the father and the, the son were reunited. Yeah. So it's really powerful. It's, yeah, it's yeah. One, of our, one of our favorite projects that we Something do. They can bring home and yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, we're going to get to make um, fruit salad in the kitchen. And you're also gonna make an alternative? Yes. You get to either <laughs> eat the slops. Like was being uh -huh. fed to the pigs or, or the, the fruit, fruit salad. salad. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, we'll be uh, watching a movie about the prodigal son, it working through um, a computer program on the computers about the prodigal mm. son playing uh, uh, Wheel of Fortune or Spin the Wheel to help with our recall of the story, and then um, having um, a retelling of the story based uh, from the point of view of the prodigal, and then looking at confession yeah. and forgiveness. Yeah. So Good. that'll be, I don't think I forgot anything, I see. No, got them all. I think it's gonna yeah. be a wonderful rotation, a good way to start off the year, and you know, get right into one of those fairly familiar stories. And, um, and, uh, and a thing, I, I think too, that the story of the prodigal son is really just, it's such an overview of, you know, God's love for us, which is what... For all people. For, yeah. yeah. And, um, the, you know, the other verse that came to mind when I was reading this, too, is, is uh, my, one of my favorite verses in Romans chapter 8 that says, you know, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, not height, nor depth, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, uh, you know, and it just, it, it's all encompassed in this wonderful uh, story of the prodigal. So, so. Love God and love others. Amen. All right. Thank well, you, Pastor Doug. We'll see you in church and, and Sunday, Sunday school. school.